I honestly think one of my favorite parts of any truck build has got to be basically putting together the axles and then finally having it as a roller, or in this case, we're gonna have basically a rolling chassis. I mean, it really does make up about 90% of a good off-road rig. So the most important parts of an off-road rig is the drivetrain, that meaning the engine, transmission, transfer case, and the axles. And in the case of this 53 Willys wagon, we're gonna be putting together a set of axles that are my favorite to build. Yes. Put the axle up on the fab table. Now this is a Spider Tracks housing with Reed Racing Kingpin outers. Honestly, I just had them laying around on the shelf and I kind of like the style. It's that old school Kingpin top, Kingpin lower. Got my alignment bar in there and what I'm doing is basically setting the face of the axle at zero, so straight up and down, and then the knuckles, I'm kicking them back 17 degrees with a positive caster. That means when I put it in the vehicle, the pinion will rotate up 10 degrees and then these will have seven degrees of uh, positive caster. It's just easier to set it up with this straight up and down with the table with the bracket. Uh, for these knuckles, what I like to do is I'm gonna root them in with the TIG and then do a cover pass with the MIG. these axles to work with my JK suspension, I'm going to use a one-ton JK swap truss kit from Artec Industries. So this is the new truss that I'm using. This is basically an Artec Industries. It's called their Apex Series truss. It's a new type of truss. The old truss that was already on this axle, it was a prototype truss. And they asked me to chop it off and install this new one because they really have the geometry figured out a lot better with this one. And there's a lot less welding on it, so less heat into the axle. Basically, this will adapt the Spider Tracks axle housing right up to the stock JK suspension. It's got the upper mounts in here for a little Johnny joint, and then I'll tack the lower mounts in once I get those measurements figured out 100%. But now that this front axle's done, all I have to do is basically finish weld this whole truss assembly. Then this axle will come off the fab table. The rear axle will go on the fab table and I'll repeat the process all over again. One of the beauties of having nine inch axles in a rig is the fact that you can build the entire third member out on a bench. Uh, you can also upgrade every single part of it. So this is gonna be a whole brand new third member going in this rig. I'm using a combo that I've used in a bunch of rigs I like before. It's a Yukon Grizzly locker. That's like a mechanical locker. So when it senses wheel speed, it locks up. That's going in the back. And then up front, I'm using a Yukon Zip locker, which is an air actuated locker. And that way I can unlock and lock the front differential. That just, I find it makes it easier to turn when you're on trails that way, because you can unlock the front axle when you're in four wheel drive. Uh, basically everything I'm gonna need is all brand new 
new, picked it up from Yukon. I'm running uh, 456 gears, both front and rear. Got a Daytona pinion support, nozzle iron third member, the locker I've told you about, upgraded uh, forged 1350 yoke, and of course, master install kit with all the parts. I need a knife to open that. <laughs> First step to building a nine inch third member is to press the side bearings onto the locker and bolt up the ring gear. The bearing races can then be pressed into the pinion support. You can drop in the secondary pinion bearing, add a little bit of silicone and install the seal. From the factory, the 9-inch uses a crush sleeve for pinion bearing preload, but I prefer to use a solid spacer with shims. I just start with a guess on the amount of shims needed and assemble the pinion support and then press the yoke on using the press. I'll then check the rotational load on the bearings using an inch-pound torque wrench, and in this case, it's just too tight. The pinion is then pressed out of the support and a ten thousandths of an inch shim is added. I then reassemble and check it all again. All the specs you need are in the book that comes with the gear set. For the Daytona 9-inch pinion support with new bearings, we're looking for between 14 to 16 inch pounds. And once we get it, the pinion nut can be tightened. The new nose bearing is then installed into the third member. The pinion support dropped in, locker installed, and bearing caps and side adjusters are all just hand tightened. Backlash on a Ford 9 inch is set by moving the carrier back and forth in the housing using the side adjusters. And once the desired backlash is achieved, six to 10 thousandths of an inch, I grab a long breaker bar and add some additional preload to the bearings. Marking compound is then applied to the ring gear and the pattern is checked. Even though it looks nice and square on the coast side, you can see that it is falling off the heel on the drive side. That means that my pinion is too close. So the support comes out and I add some shims underneath it to move the pinion away from the axle center line. I'll install it all again and check it. When I get a good pattern, the support is then pulled out one more time so the O-ring can be installed and the rear axle third member is now complete. The front third member is the exact same process, except for the addition of the Spider-Trax axle seals to keep the fluid inside the center section. I really do think that these Fabricated 9-inch axle assemblies are possibly my favorite axle to build out of all the axles that I put together for a bunch of reasons. Number one, they're crazy light, super strong, so I like that. They look really cool. I mean, this looks like a whole bunch of race car axle going underneath this classic 53 wagon. But at the same time, I think it's more just the process of putting them together that I really enjoy. It kind of lets me take care of two things. You know, I basically get to do a whole bunch of fabrication when it comes to welding on the trusses, setting the width, making sure they're straight, all that kind of stuff. And then I get to flip a switch and do a whole bunch of mechanic work when it comes to setting up the third members, installing the gears and the lockers and all that kind of stuff. So for me, that is what makes this job so much fun. It's also cool because this is a huge step. These are ready to go underneath this frame and then I'll have a true rolling chassis ready to put the body on. Well, it'll be a rolling chassis once I do like, like there's some suspension to go on this and some shocks and I have to do a little bit of steering up here. But aside from that, we're one step closer to finishing up my 53 Willys wagon. Oh yeah. 
That's a lot of work today. I'm gonna take two sips. <laughs>